What's up everybody, my name is Cyric, and today I'm going to be showing you an amazing coin called Raptorium. What it is, where to buy it, how to mine it, how to use the wallet, stuff like that. This is probably going to be a long video as there's less to cover with this cryptocurrency, so I'll just post timestamps in the description if you want to skip around in the video. Also in this video I'm going to be describing stuff that I'd expect most people to know already, like how in general crypto actually works. So if you have no idea how cryptocurrencies work or function, I highly recommend searching for a video here on YouTube. I'll link some channels in the description for you guys just so you can understand a little bit better. So what is this coin anyway? Let me start off by saying this isn't a Binance Smart Chain token or some sort of Uniswap coin or MetaMask, PancakeSwap, no, 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 none of that stuff. It's just a coin with its own blockchain on a new algorithm. Raptorium, abbreviated RTM, is a decentralized cryptocurrency that launched earlier this year as a mineable coin with just a computer CPU, utilizing a new algorithm called Ghostwriter, which stouts to be ASIC and FPGA resistant, which basically means you can't use like Bitcoin mining machines, if that makes sense, to get this coin. Currently, graphics cards are unsupported uh, at this time, but they might be later down the line. The coin is also 51% attack resistant, and the way that Reptorium handles this is with this absolutely beautiful thing called chain locking. To explain this in the simplest way possible, chain locking basically means all the nodes on the network check the hash signature they put on each block is valid before adding it to the blockchain. By doing this, nodes are able to check that there are no transactions from previous blocks causing everything to reorganize. If you don't fully understand what I just said, it's fine. Just know that the network is secure from being taken over from an individual or a group, like a pool's hash rate, for example. Now, you can make the argument that isn't too excited to hear about. I mean, there are plenty of other coins that use some sort of 51% resistance these days in some form or another. But what really makes this coin stand out is with its mining accessibility. You can use Linux, Windows, a 10-year-old Office PC, your gaming PC, your home server, a Raspberry Pi. I think you see where I'm going with this. Basically, anything that has a CPU based on ARM or 64-bit architecture is supported by Reptorium. And now that I think about it, I think I saw someone on the Discord manage to get the miner running on an Android phone, so that's pretty cool. Speaking of phones, there's no official mobile app yet for Reptorium, but Zellcor does support Reptorium. I don't have any experience with it, but it's out there. And speaking of wallets, this now brings us to the official wallet. So the way that you get this wallet is first you go to raptorium.com. As you can see, that's where we are right now. And then all you're going to do is hover over downloads and then click on wallet. Now this will take you to the official GitHub page. Uh, as you can see, it hasn't been updated since March 6th. There hasn't been a reason for them to update the wallet. Everything works in it currently. And then all you're going to do is you're going to scroll down and you are going to, and depending on your operating system, if you have Linux, you'll be using uh, the .tar.gz files. Um, but if you want to install it as a application on your computer, then you can go ahead and click on Raptorium uh, Windows 64 setup right here. Now, once you have the wallet downloaded, extracted, installed, etc., uh, when you first open it, it's going to ask you where you want to save the blockchain data to. I'd recommend keeping everything in a folder titled Raptorium Wallet, kind of like I have here, for example, just for organization's sake. Obviously, I can't show you this part because I already have the blockchain data downloaded and my wallet is already fully synced up on my computer, but it should be pretty easy for you guys to figure out. And once you first open the wallet, some of you might recognize this is a QT-based wallet. There are plenty of other coins out there that use a wallet just like this, and they all mostly function the same. And you'll be greeted by a loading screen that will give you an estimated time to sync your wallet with the network. On your first startup, this could take a few hours, so please be patient. You can only send and receive Raptorium coins in your wallet when you're fully synced up. However, wallet address creation is still possible. And once you're fully synced up, you're ready to receive some coins. Now, some of the stuff here is going to be blurred out just because I'm not trying to show everybody what my current, <laughs> what my current position is in RTM. But as you can see, we do have a few recent transactions here from different wallets and we'll be going over that right now. So first, what you're gonna do is, is you're gonna go over to the receive tab and as you can see, I already have a few different addresses created. In Raptorium, the way that the network works, you can create multiple addresses to go to the same wallet. And this allows for more anonymity and security. So for example, we have my miner deposit here. Uh, we got shared node receiving addresses. 
Uh, we'll be going over those shortly too. We got more from the Discord wallet bot. We have one for a Minecraft server. We have one for the exchanges that I use, etc. And the way that you create these addresses is first, what you're gonna do is, is you're gonna head up to this label box and you're gonna label it basically anything you want. Um, just for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just gonna name it RTM tutorial. In the amount selection, you can choose how much you want to receive through this address. Um, general consensus, I typically wouldn't. That way then you can just receive as much RTM as your hearts desire. And this message box right here, this is more of just extra notes on what you wanna put on this. So for example, the exchange wallet that I have down here at the bottom is for receiving RTM from exchanges. That's what I put in this box for this address. And then all you're gonna do is click request payment it's going to give you a Reptorium address that you can use to receive coins. You can use this address for receiving Reptorium coins through exchanges, through Discord, through mining, etc. So that's pretty much the wallet. There isn't actually that much more to it. Uh, sending uh, this, you simply enter the address and, and enter a label if you want to label it. So in case you want to have like future payments to someone for whatever reason. Uh, that is what you would, it's essentially the same thing as the receive address and, and you can save addresses and keep them organized. In the transactions tab, that's where you'll see your history of transactions and it will label it as such. I'm not going to click on that tab simply because I'm not trying to show off my position here. The smart nodes tab, this lets you see all the different nodes on the network. As you can see, this list is extremely long because there are a lot of nodes on the Raptorium network now. This list used to be much, much, much smaller. As far as actually using this for the average user, I wouldn't worry about this tab too much. Now, something that is probably the most important thing about a wallet like this is having a backup of it because it would be the worst thing in the world to have your computer storage just totally crap out and then you lost your wallet data and now you don't have any more coins. And to do that with this, it's extremely simple. All you do is go up to here to file, and then you click backup wallet. And it's going to ask what you want to name it and where you want to save it to. For an example, we'll just go over to desktop and we'll just name it wallet RTM backup. Why not? And then click save. And then what is going to happen is this is going to be saved and this will be your actual wallet right here. Now, I would recommend either putting this in cloud storage or on a USB drive or somewhere that you can keep safe. And again, this way, regardless of how many coins you have or how long it's been synced up to the network or how long your, your machine has been synced up to the network, you will always still have all of your coins, if that makes sense. Now, that pretty much is the wallet in a nutshell. There are a couple more features that I don't think are too important. That's why I'm not mentioning them. But now you should know how the wallet works. Okay, so... That's cheese, by the way. Now that we know how to make a wallet address and use the wallet, how about getting some coins into it? Well, there's three main ways of doing this. Either by buying it off of an exchange, staking your coins by locking them up in a smart node, or by my favorite method, mining it with your CPU. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, CPU mining is truly profitable again. As of the posting of this video, mining Raptorium has become one of the most profitable ways of mining with a CPU. From a dollar cost perspective, you can earn almost triple the amount of what you would get from mining a coin like Monero. Results may vary. In fact, Reptorium has become so popular in the last few weeks that the network has had some stratum issues on some pools due to presumably so many miners hopping online with a hash rate. No hate towards the pool operators. They're all doing a great job keeping this coin going. Speaking of pools, there are a few mining pools to choose from, all with their own benefits. Rplant.xyz notoriously had the largest hash rate out of any pool by a long shot for a really long time but that has changed in the last month or so with so many new miners coming in as far as pools i'd recommend my personal favorite is rpool.net for reasons i'll get to in a second another great pool is supernova i've mined with them way back in the day and didn't have any issues with them they're a great pool but the reason i chose rpool is because stormy set up rpool specifically for raptorium he's constantly active in the discord so it's great to have a sense of live support if you see it that way he consistently gives status updates if issues arise, that's why I mine there. Now as far as setting up the miner goes, I've already made a tutorial on this, which is pinned in the top right of this video right now. So without making this video like an hour long going over this again, I'm going to gloss over some stuff and talk about some of the new features and changes that have happened since that video came out. If you need a complete step-by-step -step guide like how to set up huge pages, please go check out that video. You can get the latest version of the Raptorium CPU miner down in the description or under the downloads tab on the Raptorium site, right next to where we just downloaded the wallet. 
The current officially released version of the miner created by Delgon and Ouse Miners is version 1.1.9, but 1.2.0 is currently on the way as a beta. There aren't too many differences with them other than some key features that I'd like to talk about, just so this video doesn't get immediately outdated like last time. The biggest change since my tutorial was released is the use of tuning your CPU for a better hash rate. So if we take a look at the 1.1.9 folder that I have here that I've already extracted, you'll see a tune presets folder. When you first launch the miner, you'll notice that a tuning process will start. Depending on your CPU, this tuning process can take anywhere between 30 minutes or up to two hours. This tuning process is not an overclock, it's more of an optimization function. By completing this process, you'll be able to get the highest hash rate out of your CPU. But there is a couple things that you need to know specifically about this. Number one, close as many programs on your computer as you can, like stuff in the background and current apps that you're using to free up resources on your computer. And two, do not move your mouse. By moving your mouse, you can see performance losses up to 10%. This is more of a Windows issue, but it could possibly affect your tune on Linux as well. When you start your tuning process, just leave your computer alone. Go outside, get some food, go to sleep, I don't know. It's pretty easy and simple to tune. Now the developers have made it clear that leaving GPU miners on in the background doesn't affect the tuning process too much, but your results may vary. Once your tuning process is complete, your CPU will automatically start mining with the wallet address and pool config you entered in the batch file before you started the miner. And speaking of the batch file, let's get right into some of the changes that have been made. So first, depending on your CPU, go ahead and edit the batch file of the program that you will be utilizing. And as you can see, we have all the information that we need here to set up your miner. To understand what all of this is, CPU miner-avx2.exe in this instance is whatever instruction set that you'll be utilizing for your CPU. You usually want to pick the best one. And of course, this will vary from computer to computer, so please click the README if you need more details of which program to use. Dash A, that's simply algorithm. In this case, it's Ghostwriter. We already have that filled in. Dash O is going to be the pool that you're going to be connecting to. Our pool.net is already filled in there by default. You don't have to change this unless you want to mine to another pool. Dash U is your wallet address. Currently, this is just the default address. I don't recommend leaving this in unless you want to donate to the minor developers. Just copy and paste your wallet address here. And dot worker name at the end here, this is not necessary. However, if you have a lot of rigs and want to keep things organized, all you have to do is rename this to R1, for example. Now, as far as arguments go that aren't included in the default batch file, the first one is going to be dash T. This is how many threads that you want to utilize for your CPU. If you don't know how many threads your CPU actually has, go ahead and Google your processor model number. There's plenty of ways to find this information. So for an example, in my case, we'll only utilize 10 out of 12 threads on my CPU. Now, once you have all your information filled in, all you need to do is click file and then save. Exit out and then go ahead and start the miner. If you see this error to access MSR, register administrator privileges are required, go ahead and exit out of the miner again and then right click and click run as administrator. Now once the tune is actually finished, the miner will automatically start mining. Now once your computer is actually finished tuning, it's going to create a file called tune config and place it in the folder that you have your miner. Now, if you wanna skip the tuning process, this is what the tune presets folder is for. The idea is the developers have gotten a lot of users to submit tune files for you to use, but if your CPU isn't listed in this folder, then please go ahead and do the tune yourself as there isn't one available yet. In this list, there is a lot of common processors. And that's really about it. Switching gears a tad. Now talking about new features for 1.2.0, there's going to be a new argument that allows you to select a second pool to connect to if your primary pool you added goes down so you can always keep mining. 1.2.0 also includes better optimization for CPUs with less cache memory, along with more accurate stats on your current hash rate. So be ready to snag the new miner when this update drops if you're currently using older hardware. Something else I'd like to add, there's actually a new graphical user interface miner available by OK Programmer called Salty Miner. I need to mention there is an extra small fee for using this on top of the dev fee, but for those of you who are interested in using an interface to mine instead of a command line, this option is available for you. It's a good miner and I believe it supports functions from miner version 1.1.9 at the moment. One last thing, if you need help or are coming up with errors, check out the mining channel on the Reptorium Discord, someone should be able to help you out. 
Hopefully that covers mining for you guys. Once again, if you need a complete step-by-step -step guide, please check out my other Raptorium video. Sweet, now we know how to mine Raptorium. But for those of you who aren't into mining or any of that sort of stuff, and just want to purchase the coin as an investment, or you just want to sell your coins, Currently, Raptorium is listed on a few notable exchanges, the most popular ones being Trade Ogre and South Exchange, but you can also trade on sites like Dextrade, Otradex, Qtrade, and Graviex. I'm not going to go into detail about how you use each one of these exchanges, but you should be able to figure that out on your own. I'm personally on Trade Ogre, and I haven't used any of the other exchanges, so I can't speak of my experience with them, but I haven't heard of any big problems with any of these exchanges, so no worries there. Expect larger exchanges to list Raptorium sometime in the future. Listing a coin on an exchange takes a lot of time, and I like the current exchanges Raptorium is offered on so far. Other sources for charts and price information include CoinGecko and CoinMarketLeague.com, along with a coin market cap listing that's available right now. This just dropped. Now as far as pricing goes, just want to give a quick disclaimer, none of this is financial advice. Currently I'm very bullish on Raptorium. As you can see we've had some pretty gnarly price action here on Trade Ogre. And I expect the price to keep going up as more and more people discover the coin. So quick recap. Now we know how to buy and sell Raptorium and how to mine it. Obviously you could sell your coins for profit or just hold all your coins in your wallet. But there's one more thing that you can do with them for passive income. And that's with smart nodes. The idea is you can lock up your coins into a node to receive more coins as time goes on. That sounds great! Until you realize you need 1 million coins just to run a smart node. And this value increases every three months or so for a final bump to 1.8 million coins in the future. And at current prices of this video being posted, that isn't very cheap. However, there is an alternative method of doing this, and that's through the shared node services on the Raptorium Discord. Users Vibin6 up from inodes.com and Chad from Raptornodes.com both offer the ability to deposit just a minimum of 5,000 coins into a node. A link to each of these websites will be in the description. How this works is in the name. You share your coins on a smart node with other users. Think of it as like a mining pool, but with nodes. I personally have coins locked up with both inodes and raptor nodes and have had great success over the last few months. Both of these sources for shared nodes has been a reliable service. The current return on investment time per year is currently around 60 to 70%, but this may fluctuate quite a lot over time. Nearly 60% of the current supply is locked in nodes right now. It really gives you a good perspective on how many people have coins locked up in smart nodes, meaning there's actually only around 40% of the supply up for grabs from other users' wallets and liquidity on exchanges. Hopefully I explained all that in the simplest way possible. This explanation of smart nodes was pretty vague just for time's sake, so contact Vibin6 up or Chad over in the Raptorium Discord if you have any other questions. Speaking of Discord, let's talk about the official Raptorium Discord. All I really want to say about this Discord as a whole is that it's a complete gem. Quick side note, if you don't have a Discord account or don't care to use Discord, Telegram is also available. Once you join the server, if you type the command rtm.balance, in the general text channel or in the bot spam channel, an account called Stacy's Mom will message you. Don't worry, this isn't some scam or spam bot trying to steal your crypto or something. I could probably make an entire video on this bot, but to sum things up, basically, this bot's purpose on this server is to tie a Raptorium wallet directly to your Discord account. Now here's the cool part. With this bot, you can send Raptorium coins directly to other users in the server with the use of some commands. The bot also has a mining calculator named rtm.mcal and general network information with rtm.info. Whether you want to be friendly or pay someone for a service or product, for example, you can send coins straight to people in Discord. And the best part of all, with this bot, there's a special command you can use, and it's called RAIN. Rain is probably the best part about this server. To put it simply, it's free crypto. I mean, nothing in life is free technically, but you know what I mean. And then how could I forget about Trivia? It's super salty. Trivia is run by Binary every Monday and Thursday at 11 p.m. British Standard Time. And it's a chance for you to win some coins by giving the right answer to each question. The rewards range anywhere from 200 coins to 1,000 coins, depending on the question. People get pretty competitive, and I must say, it's a lot of fun. Just prepare for the salt. Wow, this video is probably getting really long, so final things I want to mention. 
Raptorium has a subreddit as well. I like some of the stuff that's over there and I believe X76 still runs it. There's also a Twitter. You should go follow that if you're into that stuff. Good way to stay up to date on most things if you're not in Discord, in my opinion. Raptorium.io is a cool site as well if you're looking for a good mining tracker. And of course, there's the Raptorium Explorer where you can actually take a look at what's going on on the blockchain. I hope I covered everything. Sorry if I forgot to mention something. This took a really, really long time to put together. So I hope you found this guide useful in some way. And thank you all for 100 subscribers as well. I'm surprised people want to see what I have next, honestly. Thanks for that. I'll see you guys in the next video, hopefully sooner than the last. Wait, peace.